In this video, we're going to do a feature tour of the wind grid. This video will serve as a getting started point if you're new to the grid, or a refresher if you haven't used the grid in a while. So at the end of this video, you'll be very comfortable with um, some of the key features of the grid and how you can use those in your line of business application. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new Windows Swarms project. We'll call it Amazing Wind Grid, of course. And when that fires up, we'll go ahead and add a data source. What I'm going to do is use a SQL data source. I have a Northwind connection. I'm going to go ahead and grab the customers and the orders table. We'll click finish. And what that does is it adds those two tables to the data set in my data sources window. So right here, what I really want to do is use the ultra grid as the default grid for getting data from this data set. So what I can do is select customize and the options dialog will come up for the Windows Forms Designer. So you'll notice here um, for the data type list it gives me a list of all the controls that can be bound to a list type. Down at the bottom you'll notice that all of the InfraGistix controls are listed. So I'm going to select all of these controls because they can all be bound to a list. You'll notice Ultra Grid is right there. I'm going to click OK now when I select the drop down here, Ultra Grid's in the list. You also notice as well that this foreign key relationship exists too with orders. So you can see that there's a hierarchy here. So Ultra Grid is smart enough to understand hierarchy and what's going to do is give me that hierarchical option um, for building the grid. So let's go ahead and resize it like so and like so. Now to get the hierarchical data set, I'm going to go ahead and hit F5 and just show you what I'm talking about. By default, the grid knows there's a hierarchy, but that data set of orders hasn't been filled. So when I click the expansion indicators, nothing shows up. So what I need to do is actually go to my toolbox, and I'm going to drag the orders table adapter onto the form. So there it is, non-visual control down there. I'm going to hit F7. And here on the form load, you'll notice this is where we're filling the data set with the customer's data. So I'm just going to now fill the orders. So we'll say orders table adapter one dot fill. And we'll say this dot northwind data set dot orders. And that's it. So now when I run this application, you'll notice that I have hierarchical data. So this is really cool because using the regular data grid you really don't get that experience. What ends up happening is you kind of have this weird hyperlink experience. This is actually giving you the data in a true hierarchical form. One thing I didn't do, let's go ahead and anchor this grid so when we actually are resizing the form it looks good. So let's do that and do that. Now when the grid gets dragged onto the form by default what ends up happening is you don't have a whole lot of features enabled in the grid. Basically, uh, if I want to select a column, I don't even get sorting. I just get a default column selection. I do get selection in cells, and I can do selection in rows, but that's about it. One of the features you do have, though, is you can split the grid window. So you can have different scroll regions of the grid, like so, uh, which is kind of cool. It's similar to Excel. I can have as many horizontal or vertical scroll regions as I want, and I can actually have as many as I want at the same time. But what I want to do now is I want to right-click on the grid and bring up the Ultra Grid Designer. Now the Ultra Grid Designer is sort of this uh, wizard screen that gives you all the things that you need to configure the grid. So it exposes a lot of the key properties in a very easy to use way. The way we do that is through something called the Feature Picker. So if I go ahead and select the Feature Picker, you'll notice on the left hand side there's a list of a bunch of options for the grid and on the right hand side I have the grid preview itself. So if I just start drilling into some of these properties like column moving for example, I can say allow column moving within a group. Uh, column sizing, I can allow column sizing uh, as synchronized so all the columns will synchronize when they get resized. I can allow column swapping. That means I can select a column and switch it with any one of the other columns. You notice that how it activated in the grid on the right hand side. Empty rows I can enable so now if the grid doesn't have enough data to fill it, empty rows will show up sort of like Excel. And I can also change the style of the empty rows. So I'll move this over a little bit. I can extend the row selector so it looks like so. I can hide the row selector completely. 
I can prefix with an empty cell. I can align data with rows. So now I kind of have this nice Excel look and feel. If we keep scrolling down, let's go ahead and look at filtering. So I'm going to allow row filtering. So let's say allow. And you'll notice that I have a filter glyph now, sort of like an oil can filter. Um, but I want to change that UI type. I actually want to have a filter row. So this gives me a fixed row across the top of the grid that will always stay there. And I can go ahead and use filter options. You'll see how that works at runtime. As well, fix headers. So I'm going to activate fix headers. Now there's a pin. So like Excel, I can actually click the pin and columns will be fixed now to the left if I pin them. And now if I unpin, they'll go back to where they were before. Fixed rows, I can do that as well. So now I'm going to say let's use a fixed row. So now if I click that pin, that row will be fixed to the top of the grid. Through other property settings, I could tell it to fix to the bottom as well. So that's all configurable. Continue to scroll down. Um, header click sort action. Let's do multi-column sorting. And where this becomes interesting is if I enable merge cells. So I am going to say merge cells when the grid is sorted. So I'll allow on a multi-column sort, like cells will get merged together. And we'll scroll down. Outlook group by, of course, let's activate that. So now I have a nice group by area in the grid. Uh, row selectors, uh, we're going to show row selectors. They're already showed, but we'll just make sure they stay there. Row sizing, we can allow row sizing. Um, the way scrolling works, we can control selection. I'm just going to go down and allow row summaries, and I'm going to say true. So now I have another glyph on the grid, which is going to allow row summaries. So I can click apply here, click OK. And now what happens is the grid has all of these features enabled. So let's go ahead and hit F5. And we'll run the application. I'll resize the screen a little bit. So let's take a look at what we have here. So first of all, my row summaries. Let's do a count, max, min on this row. Now if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll notice that the minimum is Elfki, the maximum is Wolza, and the count is 91. So I have a fixed summaries at the very bottom. And I can go ahead and do this. Let's just do a max on this column. See, max is uh, sales representative. The filtering that we talked about earlier. So here, if I do the drop down, I can get all of the unique values. So let's get all the marketing managers. So now the grid just has the marketing managers. You'll notice that my summaries totaled up correctly. I can clear that out. I can also do various expressions. So I can do start with contains like, not like, greater than, less than, etc. So let's do contains and I'll type in sales. So now all the sales come up and as I get out of there it closes. Now manager actually M, so marketing assistant. So you can see I have a very powerful sort of uh, filtering tool here. I can pin areas to the left so now as I scroll like so those columns stay fixed as well as rows. So if I click some of these rows now when I scroll up and down, oops, let's go like that, you'll see that those rows stay at the top. And as well, if you recall earlier, um, when we set those properties, I talked about cell merging. So let's go ahead and sort on the contact title column, and you'll notice that all of the like cells were merged together. Pretty cool. Now I can do an outlook group by. So instead of merging those cells, let's do an outlook group by. So now I've grouped by all the contacts by contact title. And now in each group, I have summary data, I have the count, and I still have the hierarchy that's maintained in the order details. And then the order details as well, I can do a count on the order details. So I can have a very rich visual display. Another cool thing, if you notice, as I hovered over these cells, based on the data type, the correct type of editor shows up. So you can actually get a drop down date, um, a numeric editor. So whatever the data type is of the column, the grid's going to try to figure out um, exactly what that data type is and correctly match a control to display it uh, the right way. And then finally, if I do my column swapping, let's swap address with region. So now the region is here and address is where uh, region used to be. So without writing any code, I have this super powerful grid that does outlook group by, cell merging, sorting, multi-column sorting, row filtering, row pinning, column pinning, etc. The sky's the limit with the grid. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to get started with the grid real quickly um, using the Quick Designer. And in another video, we'll take a look at presets and how they can help you keep the configuration that you just had um, and carry it on to other grids that you build.
Thanks for watching. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.